Welcome to part two of Ross Tech's Beginner Steps to VW and Audi Success, Diagnostic Communication and Networks. We will be covering the basics of how scan tools communicate with vehicles over K-Line or CAN gateway, or how control modules and components within the vehicle communicate with each other over CAN gateway, LIN bus, or fiber optic MOST bus. What we will touch on are some of the failures that can occur and how this can prevent scan tools from communicating with the vehicles or how components within the vehicle can fail to communicate with each other. So first we start with the OBD2 port. This example shows the more commonly found pinouts in VW and Audi OBD2 ports, but it will vary some from vehicle to vehicle. On pin 1, we have terminal 15. Pin 4 is terminal 31, and pin 16 is terminal 30. These are terminal designations for automotive electrical systems. Terminal 15 is battery voltage via ignition on. Terminal 31 is a ground point, and terminal 30 is always battery positive voltage. These will come up again when we get into the wiring diagram section. Pin 16, terminal 30, will be fused. If that fuse pops, then there is no battery power to pin number 16, and most scan tools will not be able to communicate with the vehicle. With Rostec interfaces, there is an LED light to indicate whether or not the OBD2 port has power. The K-Line is a single wire data bus that older generation vehicles used and was phased out by 2011. The K-Line is used for control modules to talk to a scan tool, but not each other. Since it is a single line bus, if it is shorted or to power or ground, then a scan tool will not be able to communicate with any of the control modules in the vehicle. One of the more common issues is aftermarket radios in the older cars. They can have a 12 volt signal tied to the K line, thus no communication with anything. In the VCDS software, you can do a port test to help verify the K line is in good condition. Note that the engine control module is connected to the instrument cluster. Some vehicles will have communication via the instrument cluster rather than directly to the K line. While rare, you can have a failed instrument cluster that prevents communication with some modules. The CAN gateway is a high speed network that is a pair of orange twisted wires, a CAN high and a CAN low. The 2004 Audi A8L was the first car in the US market to use the CAN gateway diagnostics and the 2011 Beetle was the last car to make transition to CAN gateway diagnostics. With CAN gateway, there can be different networks, diagnostic CAN, powertrain CAN, convenience CAN, infotainment CAN, and some vehicles can also have an instrument cluster CAN. Uh, more on this in a moment. The LIN bus is a single wire data bus. It is cheaper to use than CAN gateway standards. It consists of a master module and up to 16 slave modules. This is generally used for simple items such as switches or sensors. In this slide, we have a typical CAN gateway network with some LIN bus components. From the OBD2 data port, you can connect to the diagnostic CAN gateway control module, and from that, the scan tool can communicate with the different modules in the vehicle. In this example, we have three LIN bus items sharing a single data line to the Central Electronics J519. A somewhat common issue is for a garage door opener module J530 to fail and lock up that LIN bus, thus preventing from the AC pressure sensor G395 from sending data, and then there is no AC with the vehicle. If the garage door opener J530 is unplugged, then the remaining modules on that LIN bus can return to normal operation. The MOST system, or optic bus, is a high-speed fiber optic network. Optic data travels in one direction from one module to the next, forming a ring. Each module shares a single wire data bus back to the CAN gateway. VCDS does have a diagnostic function that shows the order that the control modules send and receive optic data. This is a typical layout of a MOST bus system. Each control module has two optic cables, an input and an output. Data is sent downstream to the next module and to the same data circles back around to the module that originated the data. From the CAN gateway module, there is a single wire that comes out and splits into several wires, one for each module on the optic bus. This wire is mainly used to wake up the modules. 
VCDS has an optical bus diagnostic function that will show the order of the control modules that optic data travels. As shown in this example, the system is working correctly and the optic data is passing from one module to the next, forming the ring. If there is a failure with any of the optic bus modules, the no scan tool can directly communicate with any of the modules on the optic bus network other than the CAN gateway. Using the optical bus diagnostic function of VCDS, we can get a status report of each module. The gateway will call out to each control module and get a status report. If the module reports back with a thumbs up, then that module is able to communicate and is receiving optical data. If a control module reports back with a thumbs down, then the control module is able to talk, but it is not receiving optic data. And if the control module is dead, then it does not report back at all. In our example, the sound system is dead. Since it did not report back to the CAN gateway, it has an electrical error as well as an optical error. With the sound system being dead, it cannot send optic data to the voice control module. So the voice control module is reporting back a thumbs down. It is electrically okay, but it has an optical error since it is not receiving any optic data. A special optic loop tool can be used for testing the optic bus system. This is Audi part number 4 Echo 0 973802. By unplugging the pair of optic cables from the sound system and connecting this optic loop tool, then retesting, the telephone module is able to send optic data, passes through the optic loop, and makes it to the voice control, which now reports optically OK. Here is another example of a failed optic bus system. The optical bus diagnostic shows that while everything is electrically OK, the sound system has an optical error. It is not receiving optic data. There are three reasons this could be happening. One, the sound system optical receiver part has failed. Two, the fiber optic cable between the sound system and the telephone has failed. Or three, the optical transmitter of the telephone has failed. By using the optic loop tester, we can gather data and diagnose the issue. The sound system is easy to get to, so its optic cables are unplugged from the module and the loop tester put into place. When we run the test again, we now find that the voice control has an optic error. It was good in the first test. This implies that there was never optic data making it to the sound system, so a failed optic cable or failed telephone control module. We need to plug the optic cables back up to the sound system and put the optic loop tool in place of the telephone module and then retest. Now the sound system is optically OK. This shows that the sound system is now receiving optical data from the media player, bypassing the telephone module via the optic loop tester and onto the sound system. The telephone module has a failed optic transmitter. 